International Incident Number Six. Jack Packard and Reggie York. You're requested to return to London immediately for special assignment in connection with the kidnapping of a girl's finishing school. Signed, the 21 old men of 10 Gramercy Park. I love adventure. The American Broadcasting Company presents a new Carlton E. Morse production featuring the international escapades of Jack, Doc, and Reggie. Tonight's incident is entitled The Finishing School Kidnapping. London, Piccadilly Station, all out for London. Buy a flan, mister. Buy a bouquet of flan. Well, sir, the things are wilted. Put them in a vase of water. They'll pop up. Only two, Bob. Hey, come on, Reggie. Here's a taxi. Uh, right with the deck. Here you are, girl. You look like you could use two, Bob. Thank you kindly, sir. Hey, Reggie. Coming right up, Dick. Climb in. Right up. Where to? Ten Gramercy Park. Ten Gramercy Park it is, mister. Here, <laughs> have a bouquet of old worn-out daisies. I think the flower girl rescued them from an ash heap. Throw them out the window. They're dripping on you. Oh, I see. And they smell like decayed vegetation. At least toss them on the floor of the cab. Oh, sicko, Jack. What now? Twist of paper tied down in the middle. Yeah. Let's drink. Yeah, let's see that. Message in the flowers, no less. Hey, listen to this, Reggie. Warning. We're well aware of the reason for your return to London. We also are aware of the mission on which you are to be dispatched. For your own good, do not try to pick up the trail of the missing girls. Signed, the intermediary. Oh, intrigue. What's it all about? Well, you know as much as I do. Our cablegram and the 21 old men says they want us back here in connection with the kidnapping of a girl's finishing school. I say, Jack, I haven't mentioned it yet, but doesn't it seem a little bit ridiculous that anyone would take the trouble to kidnap a whole school full of girls? Well, that's one way to start a harem. <laughs> that will be right. Never thought of that. Except what part of the world still practices the art of multiple wives? Well, I suppose... It... Oh, here we are. Dan Gramercy Park. Here you are, Jeff. You're a gent, mister. Come on, Reggie. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Oh, tis it that. The 21 asked that you repair to the reception room upon arrival. All right, come along, Reggie. You know, I always look forward to entering this great room. The most beautiful large room I was ever in. <laughs> A rattling big door from the outside. Notice now when I close it from the inside. Not a sound. Yeah. See? Yeah. Everything's serene in here. I say, Jack, the hangings have been pulled back from the great mirror. The old boys must already be seated behind, looking out on us. That is true, Mr. York. This morning we are greatly troubled in our mind because of an incident of international kidnapping, the audacity and ruthlessness of which has never before been known. Then you actually mean an entire girls' school? All of the girls between the ages of 14 and 17. There were 12 of them. Our representative from Italy, in whose country the incident took place, will brief you. In the small Italian resort of Barizza and the Adriatic is the internationally famous girls' finishing school, which for 40 years has been governed by Countess Japon. The tragedy is multiplied because these young ladies who make up the student body are the daughters of the great families of all countries. Oh, complications. Three are the daughters of American industrial and political leaders. One is the granddaughter of a former British prime minister. There is a middle European princess and four daughters from great French families. There is a South American heiress, a Belgian billionaire's daughter, and two of our own signorinas from fine old families. It is a tragedy beyond the telling. Yeah, but what happened? What actually occurred? Please, I, I cannot go on. One of the little ones is my own granddaughter. I will finish for our friend from Italy. 
Tarica is a famous watering place of long standing. Near this resort on the Adriatic Sea is an abandoned airfield left after the war by the United States Air Force. Three days ago, a great four-engine plane of a design similar to the American DC-6 landed on the airstrip outside Tarica. Five men entered the school, locked up the teachers at gunpoint, selected the 12 girls between the ages of 14 and 17, marched them back to the field, loaded them aboard the plane. And that is all that is known of the incident. But I said, what were the police doing? It's a small place. We have only two possible clues. A plane similar to the one carrying the girls was sighted and reported over Kabul, Afghanistan, heading northeast. And we know the girls were taken into the Orient or Russia, huh? It is not Russia. Well, there's something that may help. On our way out of Piccadilly Station, a girl representing herself as a flower girl forced a bunch of wilted daisies on Reggie. On the flowers is tied this message. Uh, warning, we're aware of the reason for your return to London. We also are aware of the mission on which you are to be dispatched. For your own good, do not try to pick up the trail of the missing girls. Signed, the intermediary. But you must, you must. My granddaughter is with me. You are to ignore that message. A plane will take you out of London tonight for Delhi, India. Go to the Great Western Hotel. In the meantime, we may be able to lay our hands on the intermediary who signed that warning. What will we do at the Great Western Hotel in Delhi? That is our second clue. Sit at the sidewalk table until a one-eyed Greek bandit named Chadra comes to you. He hears more backstairs gossip than any other hundred men in India. But... He's a bandit at heart. You'll have to pay for your information. Sit at a sidewalk table at the Great Western Hotel in Delhi, India. Wait for a one-eyed Greek bandit. That's what the spokesman said. We're a long way from Delhi, India at the moment. We're still over the English Channel. Well, naturally, old boy. We've only been in the air about seven minutes. Hey, did it seem to you that we're awful short on crew for a four-motor job like this? Short on crew? Yeah. Only ones I've seen since we came aboard at Croydon Field are the pilot and co-pilot. And a couple of cut customers, if you ask me. You felt that too, huh? What's that? I've had a creepy feeling ever since we took off. A plane like this should have a seven-man crew. Well, they seem capable. I'll give them that. A couple of unwholesome characters, but they handle a big ship with plenty of know-how. Uh, I don't like it. Well, we can be sure the 21 old boys wouldn't load us on the wrong ship. Yeah, sounds reasonable. The old man had a cabbie waiting for us out in front of 10 Gramercy Park. He delivered us directly from the conference to this plane. Well, we're on the right plane. What about the warning of the flower girl? Sure. They could have substituted cab drivers. And delivered us to the wrong plane? I don't know. Oh, don't say it then. You make me feel worse for the minute. Hey, what's that program you got in your hand? Program? A piece of slick paper. Looks like a program for a concert. Hey, let me see that. Oh. Oh. It's in Italian. You read Italian? Oh, no. Second Summer Symphony Concert. Baritza Opera House. I say, Jack. Baritza. That's where the girls were kidnapped. Reggie, where'd you get this program? Oh, uh, stuck down behind my seat here. Found it when I dropped my cigarette. Look. May 25th, 1948. The day before the kidnapping. Oh, I don't get it, Jack. I do. One of the girls had been at the concert. She had this program in her purse when they brought her and the other 11 aboard this ship. This ship? Of course. This is the same plane that kidnapped the girls. And now it's us. One of the girls must have stuck it down behind the seat, hoping it would be found. What unutterable goal. Kidnap 12 girls and then come calmly back to Croton Airfield and pick us up. We were warned, weren't we? We walked blindly. Right, here, Dan. here comes a co-pilot. But it gets set. He looks like business. Well, he's asking for hey, it. Man. See what he has to say. Which one of you is Packard? I am. Captain wants you aboard. Oh, is something wrong? Never mind that. Come on. What do you want to argue? Oh, I'm so tough about it. Oh, so you want to debate, huh? Hold it, old boy. Don't take that gun out of your jacket. What's the idea of pulling a gun on me? Do you have a gun? I have a gun. And I have a gun. You're at a little disadvantage, looks like. Well, you blasted second-rate fly cop. Cut the talk. Take that gun out of your jacket. Butt in first. And hurry up. If one of us doesn't get to, the other will. That's it. Now drop it on the floor. I'll get you, too. Uh, good boy, Reggie. He'll sleep the good sleep for some time. I well, just made sure. Tie his hands behind him with his own necktie. I see Jack pull his breeches down over his feet so he can't get up and walk about. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, hands tied. Yeah. 
That'll take care of his feet. Well, what next, old boy? Likewise with the pilot. Oh, excellent. After that, we'll pilot the blooming ship to Delhi, India, after our own fashion. How about it, Reggie? Any radio messages back from London? Just came in. Signed, 21 old men. Good. I better stick to the control. Let's hear it. Well, we guessed right. Listen. The cab driver assigned to deliver you to the airport was found dead in a ditch. The substitute driver delivered you to the enemy plane. Hold those two renegade airmen in the ship and deliver them to the high command when you reach Delhi. Good. Don't waste time reaching Delhi. Chadra has information. Signed, 21 old men. They seem all fired anxious for us to meet up with Chadra, the one-eyed Greek. I, too. Sidewalk Cafe, the Great Western Hotel, Delhi. Next stop. <laughs> been a long time since I've been in India. Yeah, Delhi never changes with the years. More like a, an oriental circus, a street carnival in the city, huh? Mm. Listen to that music down the street. Most of the inhabitants rather come between us in the music. It's colorful, though, huh? Mm. Well, here we sit in the sidewalk cafe before the Great Western Hotel. What's supposed to happen now? Gentlemen, a what? fine piece of oriental carpet. <laughs> Hello. Rug peddler, no less. Very old piece of oriental weaving. Out of a palace. No, thanks. Take it, you fool. Examine it while I talk to you. Oh, sir. Who are you? Chadra. The Greek contact man. Uh, please, please to examine the rug, master. Oh, pretty nice piece of goods at that, Jack. Yeah, not bad. Hey, what's the layout? Keep examining the rug. Uh, here's a design I like, old boy. Meet me at the west gate to the city at sunset. We go to Nepal, to the Tibetan border by motor car. Tibet? Is that where the girls have been taken? Don't look at me. Examine the carpet. Is that where the girls are? Yes. They're in the harem of the Delhi Lama, just over the Indian border. Look here. Did you say harem? That is all. Tell me to go away. Drive me off. No, no, you haven't got anything here fit to look at. Good the Kavadja! Good the Kavadja! Look, look, old boy. Go away, will you? Infidel! Thief! Sit on you! You'd better not, you blasted old goat. Go on, go on, get out of here. I will gather my friends. I will return and call the lion. Joe really believes in putting on an act, doesn't it? Anyway, the west gate of the city at sunset. <laughs> Say what a welter of humanity. This way, yeah. Reggie. Uh, have seen anything like it? Yeah, everybody trying to get in or out of the gates of the city before sunset. <laughs> Chaps with a herd of goats are having a bad time of it. Hello, Jack. Look at that automobile. Yeah, a Rolls Royce. A block long. Oh, hello, there's, there's Chadra in the back seat. How about that? Chadra is not only a desert bandit and a Greek, but he's possessor of a Rolls Royce. Huh. Come on. Money side, money side. Uh, uh, no, money no, no money, side. old boy. No money. Uh, Don't get separated from me, Reggie. Yeah, right on your heels. <laughs> Finally made it. Huh? Get in the car quickly. Yeah. Do not call attention to yourself. All right, in with you, Reggie. Uh, pleasure. Uh. Uh. Observe. Such luxury for a Greek rug peddler. Not my car. Oh, borrowed? No. Stolen. What? Stolen? But they will not catch us before we reach Nepal. But after we reach Nepal? In Nepal, the car is mine. <laughs> It should bring a good prize, eh? Ah, one-eyed Greek bandit. Knew what they were talking about. How do we get from Nepal to this Delhi Lama's headquarters? Lamastery. Lamastery? You mean they've got a harem in a Tibetan monastery? A Tibetan Lamastery is not the same as a Western monastery. Well, apparently not. You still haven't answered how we get there. The last part of the journey will be by Tibetan pony. I will guide you to the last plateau. You will have to make the final ascent yourself. Ascent? Certainly. The Delhi Lama's Lamasary is high in the Himalayas. It is a veritable eagle's nest. Well, there she is. Right up ahead. Lamasary, monastery, whatever it's called in Tibet. Yeah, eagle's nest is right. 
Hangs right out over the edge of a precipice. Well, these must be the gates. Great arts were approaching. Uh, I'll be glad to get off of this shaggy pony. Oh, I quite agree. You know, I'm so cramped and blistered from knee to thigh, I feel as though I'd been tenderized. Active, agile little brute, huh? Been climbing this blooming mountain since dawn without any let up. Hunter, what's that? Apparently, we've been spotted. Now, let's take our heels in and get up to the gate. Oh, oh, there. Oh, hold up, boy. Come on. we got the gates open for us. Let's ride in. Yeah. Come on, boy. Whoa, whoa. Uh, we've come to see the Dalai Lama. Greetings. Please dismount. Ah, pleasure. Oof. Say, Jack, I can hardly stand. Uh, frankly numb from the waist down, but it's a relief. Huh? There is food and a bath awaiting you. Are the ponies... They will be given good care. You act as though you were expecting us. No, but this is a Lama, sir. It is our duty to give succor to wayfarers who pass this way. Well, that's downright friendly. Hassan, take the ponies. Please follow me. Travel in the Himalayas is a wearisome task. The dust of your journey shall be washed away. Oh, jolly nice, Abel. And then you'll take us to the Delhi Lama? He receives all visitors. You will be no exception. Well, certainly a monastic stone cell they've put us in. Straw on the floor for a bed. Lamp pad with a wick floating in it for a light. Well, nothing wrong with their hospitality. Warm water to cleanse us, a fiery meat stew, plenty of hot tea to fill us. Yeah, quite. Have you made up your mind yet, Jack, whether those champions are for us or against us? Well, apparently we're just two travelers passing through. What they'll think when they know why we came is something else. Mm-hmm. I'm keeping my luger handy just in case. I say, the, have you seen anything indicating there is one girl, let alone twelve, locked up in this place? No, but in this labyrinth of tunnels and passages, not to mention... Oh, here's our guide again. Hello. Sure, but pleasant hospitality. Hospitality is our business. Oh, I should think so. Come. The father will welcome you now. The Delhi Lama? Yes. Please come. Uh, you've really set yourself on top of the world up here. Yes, it is out of the world of men. Not only out of this world, but you practically look down through the long blue vault of eternity from up here. You are an imaginative, an imaginative man. Here. You will enter this door. I go no farther. Just walk in, is that it? Please. Keep with me, Reggie. Enter, gentlemen. Enter and welcome. What I say? You're the... You're the high priest, the Dalai Lama? Yes. You are surprised? But you're a scholar. This room's a scholar's room. I, I never thought that in the vastness of this isolation... Why not? For meditation... For deep and concentrated thought, where would one go but to some hidden far-off place? You were educated in England? That was before the first world conflict. I have not been out of this lamasery, and I have not communicated with the outside world in 35 years. You're a native Tibetan? I was born in a village near here, and was brought here and raised and taught by the Delhi Lama before me. How could a man of your culture, your gentle nature, your friendliness have perpetrated such a crime as you've just committed? Crime? I... Well, now, let's not beat around the bush. You kidnapped or had kidnapped 12 girls from Baritza, Italy. Those girls are right here in this Lamas area. Ah, indeed. Look, the 12 girls are members of influential families from half a dozen great nations. Now, unless this business is corrected without any delay, unless the girls are unharmed and returned safely, you're going to be the number one international criminal. What's that? Yes, Master. Bring into this room the twelve girls from the harem. Yes, Master. Then you admit... Please. While the young ladies are being brought here, uh, let me tell you a story. One evening in the early days of World War II, a great plane flying over these mountains crashed into one of our peaks. The priests climbed to the wreckage and discovered it was a refugee plane carrying English passengers from the path of the Japanese. Of the 37 passengers and crew, none lived except a girl child of perhaps three years, found unconscious, still clasped in the arms of her dead mother. 
Sure. And the little one was brought to me, and for five years she had been given all the care, the learning, the understanding available among the wise men of the Slamasse. One small English girl raised in a place inhabited only by men? A woman from our village was her nursemaid. Oh, but that was not enough. I should think not. No. And now that she is eight or perhaps nine, she needs other children, girls of her own Western world. Fourteen to seventeen, pretty old for a girl of nine. Not for this one. We have taught her well. And are you going to tell me that because you wanted companionship with this girl, you felt justified in raiding a girl's finishing school? Wait. You are anticipating my story. No. There is no justification. What I did was contact my agent in New Delhi, and I gave orders that I wanted twelve presentable young women. It was my thought that in ravished Europe there are so many misplaced persons, so many young girls made orphans by the war. It would be a wonderful opportunity for twelve of them if they were brought here out of the world's misery, given security. Educated, trained, allowed to grow to womanhood under wise, gentle tutorship. It would be a haven for them and companionship for our girls. Yeah, but these children you brought here... I know. The commission was placed in the hands of the wrong men. It never entered my mind that unprincipled agents would commit such an atrocity. Then why didn't you send the girls back? Why didn't you let the world know ah. immediately? How do you suppose Shadow the Greek got his information? And how do you suppose the 21 old men of Ken Gramercy Park received their thread of information? You mean you deliberately laid the way open for us to come to you? Of course. I could have kept the whereabouts of these girls locked away from the world forever. Yeah, but they tried to stop us. The same ship that kidnapped the girls tried to get rid of us. Yes, those unprincipled agents are now desperate. They know I do not sanction their actions. They knew if you reached me and I gave you their names, they would pay for their crime. But why would they do such a thing? Kidnap the cream of the crop. But Europe is teeming with orphans. They could have brought you twelve poor little waves off the street and no one would ever have been the wiser. They had criminal minds, those men. And there is never any logic in crime. Wickedness is irrational, unexplainable. And you're saying the kidnapping was done without your knowledge or consent? I say more than that. It was my doing which led you here to recover the girls. They are free to go back with you. Ah, yes, uh, here they are. Hello. What a charming costume. Come in, young women. These are the native dress of the Tibetan women of distinction. Well, what's the matter? Are they afraid of us or afraid of you? Afraid? <laughs> I don't think they are afraid of anyone. Is, uh, is that not true? Yes, yes Master. Master. <laughs> I say, that little blonde girl. What's your name? Uh, tell him. My name is Blanca Valka. Young women, this is Mr. Jack Parker, and this is Mr. Reginald York. How, How do you do? do? <laughs> they have come to return you to your school in Italy. Oh, oh please, please, may I have permission to speak? Uh, this is Miss Marsha Gresham. Her grandfather was once Prime Minister of England. Please, it's so wonderful here. Go back and tell our people that we don't want to leave. Oh, sir. What, sir? That stuffy, silly finishing school was making us dull social butterflies. Superficial. Here we're learning wonderful things. We're being taught to understand beauty and, and goodness and intelligence. After we've known this, it would be beastly to return us to Baritza. Look here, what have you done to these girls? They have done nothing. See, only good, only true. Sure. Oh. You've mesmerized them. Hypnotism. Hypnotized by the beauty of depth of their own souls, which was hidden from them in the outer world by trivial, stupid, superficial training. Are you trying to prove we shouldn't return these girls to their friends and families? No, they must go back. Oh, no, you no. must go back. You must go back. You must reveal what you have learned here to your family. If then you wish to return... You are able to persuade your people that is well. What about the little girl you saved from the plane wreck? She belongs here. She stays. I'll have to report all this information. We'll rest here tonight. And in the morning, the girls will be prepared. And within 48 hours, you will be returned to your own civilization. That I promise you. 
Hello, Reggie. Hello, hello. I'm listening, Elmer. Have you been able to contact London? I have that. Uh, please, no. Ask me to stand by for further chit chat. Okay, stand by. Right hello, you're not supposed to be up front with the pilot. Why not? The other girls think Mr. York is dreamy, but I prefer you. <laughs> Let's see, you're Marsha Gresham, aren't you? I knew you'd remembered me. How old are you? Seventeen. But age means nothing to a girl. <laughs> you don't say. Hello, Jack. Yeah, Reggie. Word from the 21-year-old man. We're to take the girls back to Baritza, Italy. Baritza? Not London, huh? No, back to Baritza. Jack. Oh, dear. Are you going to take us back to that silly debutante school? I'm afraid so. You'll stay over two or three days, won't you? Why? Oh, haven't I given you enough reason without coming right out and saying that I'm mad about you? You were the one who was so mad about the lamissary and the beautiful things the monks were teaching you. Well? Huh. Sure you're not just mad about men in general? A girl can be mistaken many times, but she's bound to be right once. Well, there's that possibility, of course. And I'm right about you. The minute you came into my life, I knew it. Well, that's highly complimentary, I assure you. Say, Jack, here's something more from the 21-old men. Hey, Reggie, you're supposed to stay at your communication station. Well, take a look at this. Huh? Drop the girls at Baritza and return to London immediately for assignment with the ambassador at Istanbul, Turkey. How do you like that for an assignment? But you can't stay at Baritza one night. Oh, how about that? The ambassador at Istanbul, Turkey. What's he doing there, and why? You think I'm just a child. Well, you wait and see. I'll go back to Tibet and learn all the mysteries hidden there, and I'll turn this old world upside down. <laughs> In the meantime, back to your finishing school for you, my dear. And then London and the 21 old men for us. Give her the gun, Jack. You have just heard I Love Adventure, a new Carlton E. Morse production featuring Michael Raffetto as Jack Packard and Tom Collins as Reggie York. Next week, International Incident Number 7, entitled The Ambassador Ricardo Santos Affair, taking us from Istanbul, Turkey, to the jungles of French West Africa. Harry Lang was the llama in tonight's show. Alma Lawton was Marsha Gresham. Don Morrison was Chadra, the Greek. Everett Glass was the spokesman. Other players included Lal Chan Mera, Russell Thorson, Gloria Grant, and Blanca de Sonia. The Finishing School Kidnapping was written and produced by Carlton E. Morse. Organ music and effects by Rex Curry. Your announcer, Dresser Dahlstedt. listening reminder. Adventure just comes naturally to Johnny Fletcher, and you'll just naturally go into a mild case of hysterics as he plays sleuth. So stay tuned. Johnny Fletcher, starring Bill Goodwin, follows next. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.